Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to discuss this because, man, this is really, really interesting stuff because, um, as many of you know, one of the most anticipated fights currently on the schedule is the March 2nd fight featuring... Odebeck Komatov versus Raymond Ford as they both do battle and square off for the WBA, the vacant WBA featherweight title. Big, big fight for the division. Big, big way to kick off the first quarter of 2024 for the, for, the, for the featherweight division. I feel like 2024 is going to be the year of the featherweight division. But Raymond Ford, interesting enough, um, he had some choice words for uh, one of Odebeck Komatov's friends. A guy that, even though he is Odebeck's friend, I'm cool with Odebeck. I don't really like this guy, to be honest with you. I don't like him because I feel like he was a dishonorable champion and didn't want to fight nobody. And I feel like boxing politics is favoring him um, unjustly. And he's already worked his way into mandatory position despite really ha not having done much since losing and getting absolutely exposed by Marlon Tapalis. And that is MJ Akhmadaliyev. Now, Raymond Ford has some choice words for um, MJ Akhmadaliyev. He stated the following, and I quote, I want to see MJ after I beat up his little teammate. Then he put the little devil face emoji and quote. So listen, man. Raymond Ford thinks I don't, I don't like is that I don't like him for some reason because I, because I think Odebeck's gonna beat him. But look, if he's victorious against Odebeck, and even if he's listen, even if he's not victorious against Odebeck, I don't really care. This is this this, this is how you, if you want to know how I, if you want to know how you can get me behind you as a fighter, just just call out MJ Aguadalia because I I can't I don't like MJ Aguadalia. MJ completely disgraced the super bantamweight uh division when he had the unified titles and blatantly ducked and avoided Stephen Foden for the belts for undisputed then he tried to get an easy pay to it in a way and then fight his mandatory because he thought Marlon Tapalos was going to be easy work he found a Marlon Tapalos wasn't easy work and got and lost to Marlon Tapalos and then now he wants to just get a free you know a free ride to, to a world title shot and I just that's not that's not fair right there's, there's other guys in the division I feel like he should have to fight to to get into that position right so um yeah b because of the politics and because of mj the way he handled everything as a champion you know he's a good fighter but i do think that the media and a lot of boxing analysts and a lot of, a lot of boxing pundits are overrating him like again i'll say what i've said in other videos and on lives like there are a lot of great eastern european fighters there's a lot of great talent come out of central asia but sometimes i think there are some people in boxing that are quick to overrate central asian and eastern european talent now a lot of people can say that i'm one of those guys because i do like a lot of those fighters and i do make videos about a lot of those fighters because there is a lot of talent from there but m jack medaliev is not one of them guys that i think is this killer right so i would love to see raymond forbes um uh, mj akmedalia because um i think he could beat him to be taught i think he could beat him um MJ Akhmadaliyev doesn't have the gas tank of an older back Komatov, nor the size of an older back Komatov. So I feel like Raymond Ford would be able to fight the kind of fight he he's accustomed to fighting, and um, he's very physically strong uh, for for featherweight. So I feel like he could actually, in spots of that fight, push around MJ Akhmadaliyev. I, th I think I think there's going to be some stylistic advantages for Raymond Ford in that fight. Well, not saying it'd be an easy fight for him, but it would be an interesting fight and a winnable fight for him. So. Uh, Look, I, I don't know what MJ's plans are as far as uh, the, the super man weight division. I know that he's looked at to be um, unjustly, you know, in a way's top target for uh, potentially in a way fighting in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia. So if that happens, you know, I think once he gets butchered by the monster in 2024 at some point, he's not going to want to fight at uh, Bantamweight anymore because there won't be anything from a monetary standpoint. I feel that would that would that'd be worth it for him, right? So then he may explore move the, to the super bet to featherweight, and that's why I think a fight with him and Raymond Ford could come into play, right? So I really don't care if it's a uh, if it's if it's if it's now if it's in twenty twenty four if it's in twenty twenty five, I'm I'm team Raymond Ford for that one. Uh, listen, I'm definitely team Raymond Ford for for that one because um, MJ needs to get beat up. Like MJ needs to get beat up again because boxing politics are unfairly on his side, um, and he's not really being made to have to go through the proper grind of of losing your titles and working your way back up properly up the rankings like i'll give you an example right a guy that was a champion in his weight class 
Who, by the way, just so you know, he never called him out when he was champion. So let's just put that out there. But a guy that he sparred and a guy that made him hop out the ring in one round, Angelo Leo, you know, he's he had to fight Nicholas Polanco, who was a 130 pounder, to to win a WBA uh, a trinket, to get back in the rankings. Now he's fighting Mike Planilla, and then he may have to fight like a top contender after that. Then he gets title shots. So we're talking about he had to do two or three fights. This would be a second fight. He might have to do three fights before he even gets title shot. This guy beats, you know, Kevin Gonzalez, who, yeah, he was 26-0, but just fought nondescript opposition in Mexico that nobody ever heard of. And he is being afforded a mandatory slot. It's not cool, right? So I just, I look at the way Murjohn's been treated since losing the belts and when he was champion versus how Angelo gets treated um, when he had the belt. Same weight class, right? And, um... You know, it's just it's just not fair what's going on in uh, the politics, and I just think that, you know, I I, I do, and I'm always gonna feel some type of way until he's made to go through the grinder and win some tough fights to get back into position. I'm gonna continue to talk this way about MJ. Not to say that he's not a good fighter, because he is a good fighter. He wouldn't have became champion if he wasn't a good fighter. He wouldn't have been competitive against guys like Danny Armand and Tapalos if he wasn't a good fighter. But I just don't think he's as good of a fighter as some of you guys think, and and you guys have pop him up so. This is one for the future, and I just wanted to speak my piece on Raymond Ford versus uh, Merge Apple Dahlia because look, he said he wanna he wants to um beat up Merge on at some point. And I, I can get behind that. So shout out to Camden, New Jersey, Raymond Ford. Uh what do you guys think? What do you guys think about that fight between MJ and Ford? I know I know uh Ford has had some fights that I thought he lost against Edward Vasquez and could have lost against Aaron Perez. But then he he's come back and he's beat some good fight. He beat Jesse Magdaleno, um, beat Sicario Lucas, who was ranked. So it's like he he's came back in a, in a good way, and and I think the Komatov fight will will tell us more about him. But um, this is one fight for the future that I'm gonna file away here on True School Sports. So let, let, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from doing it. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.